Good evening and welcome to the final Dearborn Mayoral Forum. My name is Maria Dwyer and I will be moderating tonight's event. The format for this evening is as follows. Each candidate will be given two minutes of uninterrupted time to make an introduction. We will then move on to the questions. Each candidate will be answering seven questions and will be given one and a half minutes to answer each question. The candidates have been sequestered. At the conclusion of the questioning, each candidate will be provided another three minutes of an uninterrupted closing statement. The candidates have not been provided the questions we are about to ask in advance of tonight's event. So let's get started. We're going to kick off tonight with Mr. Gary Warrencheck. Mr. Warrencheck, uh, we'll start by giving you an opportunity to make a two-minute introductory statement. Thank you very much. And first, I'd like to thank What's Up Media Network for the opportunity uh, to discuss some issues and provide some information to the voters of Dearborn. And uh, thank you to everyone who's watching this. I'm glad to see there's such great interest in this election. Uh, there should be. It's a pivotal election in Dearborn's history, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. So how did I get to this point in this important election? Here's my Dearborn story. My parents bought a small brick ranch in southwest Dearborn just around the time I was going to start school. What a great move that was for our family. I grew up here, and then Vivian and I raised our daughter here, and now our daughter and her husband are raising our two granddaughters right here in Dearborn, and they're both in Dearborn Public Schools, the fourth generation of my family to live here. I am deeply and personally invested on a family level in wanting to help Dearborn thrive and succeed. I'm running for mayor because I love this city and because I believe that Dearborn would be best served by a mayor with my experience, background, and proven record of service and accomplishments. I served Dearborn as its state representative and on the Wayne County Commission for a total of 20 years of holding office and being entrusted by voters to look after Dearborn's best interests. Before, before holding public office, I was editor of the Dearborn Press and Guide for many years, so I have a long-term perspective on our community and the issues that have shaped it. My background as a journalist has fit well with my service in public office, and it's a driving force in my determination to make Dearborn city government more transparent, accountable, and inclusive. Dearborn is still a great place to live and raise a family. To keep it that way, we need a mayor who can provide strong leadership and who has a deep, long-range understanding of what makes Dearborn special. I believe I'm the best choice to be that mayor, and that's why I'm running to serve the city that's so special to so many of us. Thank you, Mr. Warren Chuck. We're going to turn first to traffic and safety. Dearborn has experienced traffic control problems recently with accidents and speeding cars seemingly in every corner of our city. How would you work to reduce these traffic problems for the city of Dearborn? Yeah, uh, every, every neighborhood has its own unique concerns, but every neighborhood has this universal concern of traffic in the neighborhood and on the main streets around it. I was just at a neighborhood association tonight in my own neighborhood, and they were talking about the, uh, the traffic on Ford Road and the, the, the loudness and the, and the speeding. And um, I think we need to make sure we have uh, proper police enforcement and deployment in the neighborhoods and on those streets. It's clearly a problem that has affected the quality of our lives. Um, we need to, in the neighborhoods, look at some other traffic calming measures. Um, we could look at things like speed humps instead of peace speed bumps if we get neighborhood consensus on that. Um, but also we can uh, start a public awareness campaign, which I think, um, you know, some people might think you're just going to tell people to, like, lock, lock it or lose it, that one that they had uh, not long ago. But, but it's so cheap and we could, like, emphasize the importance of following traffic safety regulations. Um, those things and, and, you know, better enforcement, some selective enforcement in problem areas. Um, there's no doubt if some if people are getting pulled over regularly uh, for a period of time, uh, people are going to be a little more apt to look after the, uh, follow the rules of the road. And also we have to talk to the people who are training people to drive these days. Um, they have to know that stop signs are not a, a suggestion um, and that speeding in neighborhoods is an important thing to be aware of. Thank you. Both candidates have addressed our declining infrastructure. In particular, uh, we know that the city recently suffered a lot of destruction in the recent flooding. 
How would you fix the flooding issues that have recently plagued our city? And assuming those flooding issues are fixed, what's the next major piece of infrastructure that you would address? Well, the, to deal with the flooding we specifically suffered through at the end of June, um, I support the City Council's decision to get an outside independent look at exactly why that happened. Because we all have our ideas on why it happened. But unless we get an actual uh, professional look at it, uh, then we won't know. And once we get those answers, then we can address that specific problem, why we had the flooding that we had at the end of June. And the reason we need an outside investigation is because residents are angry and they don't necessarily trust the answers they'll get from City Hall. Even though they may not be, uh, they may be accurate answers, I think our residents need to be comfortable with the answers we get for that. Um, I've been looking into something called smart sewer technology uh, that the City of South Bend, Indiana has, um, has piloted. Uh, where they actually, within their sewers, they put sensors and battery-powered pumps so that when the sewers reach a certain capacity, they can watch it, monitor it in real time and move water along quicker in some areas uh, to, to make sure we don't, you know, overflow or back up in the basements. I'm not sure if that's something we can look, we can look into here, but that's the sort of thinking outside the box that we need to do. Uh, the natural things to think about are uh, retention basins, um, expanding our natural floodplains, as far as, um, as far as improving our infrastructure, we've been doing our, our combined sewer overflow project for a number of years, and um, you know, hopefully that's going to bear some fruit as well. But um, right now we have to address the flooding, and it cannot be forgotten. We can't let that go because it's in the past. Uh, that's going to be one of the top priorities of the next year. Thank you. Medicinal and recreational marijuana are now legal in Michigan. Do you support allowing either medicinal or recreational marijuana to be sold in stores in Dearborn? And do you support the recent amendment by city council members Serini and DeBaja to not industrialize marijuana in Dearborn? Um, I think that the, the neighborhoods need to be respected when it comes to marijuana. And we have neighborhoods where the like the vast majority of residents don't want anything to do with it in their neighborhoods. We have to find or respect that within the limits of the law. Um, I do not um, at all support uh, selling retail, retail outlets in town um, for recreational uh, either. And um, I've looked at the amounts of money that it could bring into the city and it's minimal compared to the headaches it could cost to us. I think that uh, we have to go on record as uh, extending this moratorium that the, the city and the council have had against allowing uh, facilities uh, dispensaries for recreational marijuana and uh, again respect the, uh, the wishes of our neighborhoods and our residents. I know it was a close vote when it came to legalizing marijuana but in certain parts of our town especially the residents are strongly against it and I want to make sure that they don't have to have it thrust upon them. Thank you. We recently heard that one of the police unions made a statement about unrest under police chief Ronald Haddad. What is the first step that you would take to mending the bridge and also increasing public safety in our city? Yeah, that was, uh, it was quite a statement. And I know that, that I've known for some time that our police officers um, have had disagreements with the chief. And, um, you know, that, that's in the current administration. And our new administration will have, uh, will, will find solutions to that. Um, we don't have uh, any plans. We haven't uh, promised anyone um, from the current administration that they'll be staying in on my administration. Uh, we're going to consider that as we go along. Um, but we, we have to, like, we have to respect the, um, the information that we get from frontline patrol officers. Um, and if they're saying that we're not deploying properly, maybe I, I, I as mayor would have to look at that and make sure that we have the proper deployment in our neighborhoods uh, to solve, uh, solve the crimes and to deal with the traffic situations that we've been suffering through. Um, the issues between the chief and some of the uh, officers is something that they would have to work out or the current administration would have to work out. Uh, but uh, I'm a big consensus builder and um, when I'm in office, uh, I'll be bringing all parties together. We're going to have much more harmony, uh, but most importantly, we have to provide good service. The, the public safety in our neighborhoods um, is of greatest importance. Um, and we have to make sure that everybody feels safe and secure. Public safety has always been one of the things that set Dearborn apart, and we're going to keep it that way. Thank you. A balanced budget is always a major concern. What is the key factor to you in balancing the budget while maintaining and improving the quality of life for the residents in our city through the continued and increased city services that we've come to enjoy? 
some of that will be impacted by the vote we're taking on November 2nd on whether or not to renew uh, supplemental millage uh, for the city uh, tax bills, 2.75 mills, which is about $10 million um, to the city budget. So um, a lot going forward will depend on whether the city has that revenue to work with or whether we need to figure out how to uh, uh, conserve that kind of money in order to, uh, to maintain our level of services. Um, obviously, we, always, we, have, we have to have a balanced budget, and we always will. Um, we have to make sure, make sure that we uh, also have uh, what we call a rainy day fund to have money set aside uh, for emergencies. Uh, but I know that people in Dearborn are concerned with taxes. Our tax rate is higher overall between city, schools, and county with some of our neighboring communities. Uh, but we need to really focus on a balance between tax rate and services. Um, our population in Dearborn increased 12% in the last 10 years. Um, that means people want to live here. I'm going to assume that they, they're not coming here for the high tax rate. I'm going to assume that people are living in Dearborn because they like the services, they like the amenities that we provide. We have to maintain that. Um, you know, hopefully we can grow our revenues, um, some new housing, um, you know, the values will, will go up and we'll be able to uh, get some more get some more revenue um, so we don't have to so we can provide better service without raising taxes and uh, you know we'll, we'll take it from there thank you a new mayor brings in his or her own uh, new administration and with that comes new department heads what process would you use to replace department heads when folks either retire or because after review you think you need to make a change and how will you engage the pro public in this process? I think it's important that we look to within Dearborn for our department heads. Um, and I understand the value of a national or regional search uh, for certain positions. But I think we have a lot of talent right here in Dearborn. And beyond that, beyond having the talent here in Dearborn, people who are living in Dearborn now who, who love this community have the heart for the city. And I think just by nature they will serve better um, by, by, being, by having that ta talent cultivated here. I also think that we need to look toward our um, existing workforce. Um, we have a lot of people who, who are, are working now in city government who need to know that there's a possibility of advancement um, in their positions. Uh, it, it will inspire them to do better work and then we, they won't be looking elsewhere. We've had instances in the city and schools where we have talented people um, who don't feel that they could advance to the top positions and they look elsewhere and we lose good people that way. Um, my plan would be to uh, cultivate our, our local talent. And of course, um, you know, we'll have a transition committee that will be set up of, uh, of people from all corners of town. Um, we'll have so much representation on that. It'll be a very diverse committee for transition and we'll also get our guidance on our department heads from that as well. Thank you. There's been a lot of talk of ethnic division in this race, which troubles me greatly. We live in a diverse community, and in fact, Dearborn's more diverse now than it was when I was attending school at Lorry and Fortson. So how would you ensure that this carries uh, through and that uh, unity uh, results from your administration and that carries through to our youth? That's a very good question. It's a very big problem. I think that Dearborn is more divided now than it has been in recent years. And that is not progress, that is regress. And um, we need to figure out a way to address that. And hopefully after this election, um, people will, will take stock on what happened and maybe uh, we, can, we can take a good, good look at ourselves and see what kind of community we want to be. Um, right now, um, there, there's a real, there are divisions culturally, there are divisions geographically in town. Um, some of our neighborhoods are separated, um, you know, either by, we have one on the west end separated by uh, Telegraph Road, kind of cuts them off, and then in the south end is cut off by industry. We need to figure out how to bring everybody together um, and, and have harmony in this town. We, we had been, I thought, and even in the days after 9-11, I remember how this town came together and wrapped its r arms around each other. Um, we've lost that somewhere along the way. Um, I'm concerned about the, the politics in this race. Um, it, it's become too, uh, too divided among, among ethnic and cultural lines. We need to find a way to, uh, to get around that because, um, frankly, uh, I've had friends that you know, have, have been nervous about having lunch with me because they think, well, I'll get a hard time uh, from, from members of the Arab American community, Arab American friends who want to have lunch or coffee with me. 
Um, fear is not good for politics. We need to get away from that. I understand passion. I understand, um, I understand excitement in politics, but fear has no business in our politics. Thank you. I just want to circle back. Um, as a mother raising two young kids in this city, how would you uh, ensure that our youth are engaged in um, continued discussions and avoiding this division? Well, I'd like to believe that our children are, are a lot smarter than we are on these things. I think that our children, um, um, because there's so much diversity in our schools, that, that they're uh, that they just that they don't see differences among each other. That uh, you know they're all just kids in the class, and and I think over time, as like like all cultures and communities evolve over time, uh, there's actually more of a blending with our children um, than there are sometimes with our adults. So actually, I um, I don't see that we're on the wrong track there. I think that um, we have to have more um, more activities that everyone in the community can take part in. Um, to bring everybody together, you know, assuming we're going to continue um, the homecoming festival that, that people have enjoyed for decades, um, we need to have, um, we need to include more diversity in that um, so that we can all come together as a community. But as far as, our, specifically about our children, I have less concern about our children right now uh, regarding uh, getting along than our, than our adults. Thank you, Mr. Warren Check. At this point, we're going to provide you with a three-minute uh, opportunity to give a closing statement to our audience. Um, thank you very much. I'm running for mayor so my granddaughters can love growing up in Dearborn just like I did, and just like our daughter did. I'm running to make Dearborn a place where young families want to settle, a place where our senior citizens feel comfortable and secure, and where people know where their police and firefighters will respond quickly whenever they're needed. There's just two of us left after a primary election in August that had as strong a field of candidates as I can remember in any Dearborn's mayor race. Now you have to choose between just two. Now is the time to sift through all of that mail, the text messages and robocalls and videos and social media chatter and clutter and focus on who is most experienced and best prepared to be mayor. It's time to focus on who has proven himself over time to be someone we know we can trust, not guess, hope, or assume, but know we can count on to do what's best for Dearborn and to serve us well. It's time to focus. What has always set me apart in this race is my experience, and here's why that's an especially important thing for voters to consider. Mayor O'Reilly has served Dearborn for 30 years. That's a lot of experience leaving at the end of the year. Our city council will get at least three new members this year, and two others are still in their first term. So we'll have a fairly inexperienced city council. Seven council members, five with either one term of experience or none. And I'm sure they'll work hard and bring different talents to the table, but it makes it all the more important, I think, to have more experience in the mayor's office to provide some balance and leadership. Experience is more than just longevity. It's the seasoning that enables one to solve problems, deal with difficult situations, and to see beyond the moment. There's only one way to get experience. You put in the work, you put in the time. I know how to run things, I know government, and most importantly, I know Dearborn. Let me put all of that experience and passion for our city to work for you as your mayor. I'm Gary Warnchak, and I'm asking for your vote on November 2nd. Thank you, Mr. Warnchak. We're going to just take a moment now to let Mr. Abdullah Hamoud enter the room, and we'll start with his questions.
I'm going to go over it when we Joining us now is Mr. Abdallah Hamoud. The same rules that applied to Mr. Warrenshek will be applied to Mr. Hamoud. He will be given two minutes of an uninterrupted introduction, after which point we will move on to the questions. He will have seven questions to answer. You'll be given a minute and a half per question. And you were sequestered, so you don't know what the questions were, similar to Mr. Warrenshek. At the conclusion of the questioning, we're going to give you another opportunity to provide a three-minute closing statement to our audience. Are you ready? Yes. All thank right, you so let's much. get started. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, first and foremost, thank you so much um, to What's Up Media for hosting uh, tonight and uh, to our anchor for the evening, I guess as they say, <laughs> and to all those tuning in. It's a really important election. You know, Dearborn is home. It always has been and it always will be. And when I think of our hometown, I think of three terms. Culture, community, and connection. Culture, from the Maltese to the Italians and Polish to the vastly diverse Arab diaspora. Community, the city of 110,000 residents that's able to sustain that small town homey feel where neighbors and friends grow to be family and are there for you in moments of joy and there for you in moments of grief. And connection, no matter where you are, you find yourself drawn back to the city that we all love and call home. Catching yourself in conversation, reminiscing about your, child, your childhood and your upbringing. Everything we need to succeed as a city is right here before us. B beginning with every single one of you tuning in. Beginning with the entrepreneurs that continue to open up small businesses in the city of Dearborn. And it's in the commitment of corporations like Ford who are committed uh, and choose to reinvest here. What's important though is having the right leadership at the helm of our city. We need a mayor who works for working families and who's not afraid to roll up their sleeves and tackle the tough issues. We need a mayor with fresh ideas and a fresh perspective to move us forward. For the last five years as state representative, that is exactly what I have done. Work for the people, with the people. When corporate polluters sought to increase emissions in our city, we organized with the residents of Dearborn to push back and we won. And we delivered to city council a local solution. The blueprints to the city's first ever environmental ordinance, a version of which was adopted. When we heard of the countless stories of how our streets and neighborhoods were no longer safe because of the speeders, we were steadfast in our commitment to eliminating distracted and drunk driving, earning me the recognition as the Mothers Against Drunk Driving Legislator of the Year. And when the flooding swept through our neighborhoods, I never wasted time pointing fingers. I put on my work boots, assembled a team, and we went to the door helping those in need. And that's why I'm running for mayor, to continue to make progress and tackle the issues impacting our working families. Thank you, Mr. Hamoud. Let's start with our first question. Um, you, you talked a little bit about the flooding in your opening statement. Both candidates have addressed our failing infrastructure and in particular the recent floods which plagued our community. So please tell us how would you fix the flooding issues and assuming the flooding issues are fixed, what would be the next major piece of infrastructure that you would address? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. You know, we need not wait to assume office in order for us to begin the work. You know, as state representative in my current role, when the flooding happened, we never wasted time. We rolled up our sleeves, threw on our work boots, we assembled volunteers, and we got onto the neighborhoods and we helped residents. We pulled furniture and debris out of people's basements. We helped bring in the Samaritan's Purse into Dearborn that still work until this day, helping remove the molding in people's basements. And we helped lead the initiative to secure $10 million to the state of Michigan uh, that was given to families impacted uh, and devastated by the floods. And what we've also done is we've actually submitted parcels of land already to Wayne County and to the state of Michigan in order for us to use the American Rescue Plan Act dollars which have been allocated to counties and state governments to help revitalize and create new wetlands, to create new retention basins um, in order for us to collect excess water when we do have heavy rains. The reality is the climate crisis is real. And there's a clock ticking on the wall. 
And that clock is when the next heavy rain is going to happen in Dearborn. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And so we've already been doing the work. And so that's what we have to do. We can look to neighboring cities and the successes that they've had. Detroit has already announced that as they dig up the roads and separate their sewer lines, they're going to put, up, they're going to put back uh, flow valves on each and every single residential home. We looked at Dearborn Heights. They've announced a plan about how they're going to reduce the possibility of flooding in neighborhoods. We can look at cities like Taylor um, and what they've done in years past to help prevent flooding in neighborhoods. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can look to successful models across the state. Thank you. With each new mayor brings new department heads. Mm -hmm. So tell us what process would you use to replace a department head when it becomes time either through people retiring or because you identify that a new department head is needed in a particular area. And also share with us how would you engage our community in making those selections and making the right choice for those departments. Yeah, thank you for that question. From the outset of our campaign, we had promised a, a very accountable and transparent campaign, one in which no promises were made along the campaign trail. And we're proud to be one of the only candidates who can say that. Um, we've also said that we're going to assemble a community transition team of individuals with various backgrounds and degrees coming to the table to help us recruit and recommend for hire the various directors and appointees across the city uh, of Dearborn. And for those existing directors that would love to stay, they can come through this process. And for those new individuals who would love to come to the city of Dearborn and work, or our current residents or current employees who think they can offer something new, we'd love for them to come through the process. We have to find a way to recruit and bring the best of talents to Dearborn uh, or cultivate the talent that, that already exists and ensuring that the community has a say not only in who the next mayor is going to be, but also in who the next administration is going to be because the directors in the city ultimately work in civil service. Uh, their, their goal is to work to help improve the lives of, and the quality of life for the residents of the city of Dearborn. So we'll have a community transition team and we're also going to make sure that we put out a survey to ask residents what is your vision for Dearborn and what would you like out of your next administration. And so we think that this is an ongoing conversation that begins the day after the election, not on January 1st. This begins November 3rd. Uh, we, we have an ongoing conversation from November up until the point we assume office and hopefully just carry it forward in new capacity at that degree. Thank you. Medicinal and recreational marijuana uh, is legal now in the state of Michigan. Do you support allowing either medicinal or recreational marijuana to be sold in the stores in Dearborn? And do you support the recent amendment by city council members Serini and DeBaggia to not industrialize marijuana in our city? Yeah, uh, I, I do not support the sale of medicinal recreational marijuana in the city of Dearborn. Um, and additionally, if you look to the fiscal argument that many communities, uh, many cities tend to make, um, on average, a city will only collect $28,000 for every retail store. Um, and so the financial argument is not there to be made. Um, the debate of marijuana is actually one about representation. It's about neighborhoods having direct say as to what is happening near their homes. And so we have to empower residents and communities on what happens near their residential homes. There's a great inequity also in zoning. And in the way it stands, current grow operations will largely be funneled into the South End, which overwhelmingly voted against legalization of marijuana and have protested repeatedly against these operations in their neighborhoods. As mayor, I will prioritize the community's concerns. We should not have grow facilities near homes. It's not something I would want near my home. It's not something you would want near your home. So how can we have the ability to impose it onto others near their homes? The facts are, it is legal. And several care row facilities have been given license here in the city of Dearborn. That's not something that we can roll back with any administration that comes into office in January. But we'll be sure that we do not expand it any further uh, and limit it to those who've already received approval uh, because we can't roll that back, unfortunately. In your opening remarks, you talked about the diversity in our community. During mm -hmm. this race, we've seen a lot of division uh, in our communities, and that, that troubles me. I shared yeah. that with Mr. Warren Check, and you and I have talked about that. So tell us, how would you ensure unity uh, within our community, and how would you ensure that that transcends to our youth? Yeah. You know, first and foremost, as we're running for office, we know that the spotlight is on us as candidates and people perceive us as leaders throughout the city of Dearborn for our respective roles or the role that we're seeking. So as we're running our campaign, we're focused on the issues and on the people who are impacted by the issues. And what we stand up against is using inflammatory language such as, this candidate is trying to take over. These are dog whistles. This is inflammatory language trying to cause a stir 
within a segment of the city of Dearborn and that's really creating a further division. And so we have to stand up loudly and say that we oppose that. Um, what we have to do also is find ways to bring the various corners of Dearborn to come together and celebrate the diversity that we have. As we canvass on doors all throughout Dearborn, one thing is clear, Dearborn is beautifully diverse. We have a rich and vibrant community. But as you knock on neighborhoods, you also notice that many of our neighborhoods are segregated. Um, and we have to create opportunities for various corners of the city to come together. We have the homecoming festival. We have the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. It would be great to bring back things like the Arab American festival. It'd be great to, to elevate some of the basketball tournaments that we have that engage our youth to a different degree. You know, something I learned in Lansing, one of the ways I was able to be extremely, uh, extremely successful was I used to play basketball with my Republican colleagues every Thursday morning. And that camaraderie on the court led to camaraderie in the Capitol. And that's the same type of environment that we have to create for our children and for our residents. Thank you. Taxation. Yeah. It's been a big area of concern it from is. the wealthiest folks in our neighborhoods to those in the uh, lower brackets of, of income. So share with us um, how you intend to address these temporary millages that tend to reoccur. Uh, would you continue that under your administration? Um, or would you focus on lowering the tax burden by not uh, renewing those millages? And if the taxes are lowered, how would you maintain the high level of city services that we all enjoy? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. You know, we're 10 days away from the campaign, and I'm proud to say that we're the only candidate uh, from the primary up until now, 10 days away from Election Day, to have a plan on how we reduce our property taxes without impacting the level of services that the city of Dearborn, re that the Dearborn residents have become accustomed to and really appreciate. In fact, we find ways in which we actually are able to reinvest and improve the level of services that we offer. We have a five-part plan, and it's a 10-page document, and I won't have time to go through all of it. But I encourage you all to go to votehamoud.com slash issues. Uh, the focal point and what's foundational to our plan is we talk about how we pay down our unfunded liabilities. We make a very large payment every year, you know, essentially kind of like a mortgage payment on a very large mortgage. And what we want to do is make one lump sum payment uh, using some uh, fiscal savviness that allow us to refinance the remaining debt and decrease our annual payment. That will then allow us to actually provide and eliminate some of these temporary millages that often come up every three or four years and allow us to save even more dollars to help reinvest into some of the city services that we offer. Another element of this is trying to incorporate technology uh, and use technology as a way to bring efficiencies to government. Um, if you look at the city of Dearborn, one of the most recent uh, technological advancements that they celebrate is the ability to pay your water bill at a kiosk. It's 2021. I think it's disparaging that we don't have a city app. I think it's disparaging that we haven't used technology to a good to a good degree that actually improves and makes easier the quality of life for our residents. And that can also help bring down costs. I've done this before at the state where we've helped provide uh, over $100 million in savings on the budget that I lead. Um, and hopefully we can do the same thing in the city of Dearborn. Let's turn now to traffic and safety. Uh, I have a lot of friends and family that live right off of uh, Ford Road and Telegraph. I live near Military and Cherry Hill. We've seen uh, a lot of uh, our police stopping uh, residents mm -hmm. recently to uh, try and slow down the traffic. There have been a lot of accidents and speeders in those areas. What would you do to try and reduce these traffic problems in our city? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, this is a concern that you hear in every corner of the city. And, and again, I know I've said this previously, but we're the only campaign with a clear plan that's put on our website. And we take the best practice models from across the country. Um, and it's our Families First Improving rates, uh, Road Safety Model. It's a three-part plan. Uh, one part deals with shifting um, focus for police enforcement from non-moving traffic violations to things such as speeding and reckless driving. And we heard in the recent statement from police officers about the need for more patrol vehicles. They have the staff but the way the staff is allocated has been improper, and that's something that we'd love to address. Um, secondly is implementing traffic calming measures. Um, you know, you can look to speed humps, widening of sidewalks, including bike lanes. The reality is every neighborhood is different than the other. Some things work in some neighborhoods, others work in others. Um, and what I've also learned though in speaking with firefighters, for example, they know which neighborhoods have the most intersections. And when I asked them what is done with that data, they told me that no one's ever asked for it. And so we also have to be savvy and utilizing the data that we have on where these accidents are happening in order for us to incorporate the most impactful tactic to help reduce and prevent the likelihood of speeding, reckless driving, or any accidents. And the third component of our plan is actually a coordinated public messaging campaign. 
Speeding and reckless driving is not only an issue in Dearborn, it's not only an issue that impacts uh, the families in the neighborhoods, it impacts our schools, it impacts our businesses. It's an issue throughout Wayne County, it's an issue throughout Detroit. We can pool our resources together to have an effective messaging campaign to help reduce the likelihood um, and stop the likelihood of people speeding and reckless driving throughout our neighborhoods. Thank you. That dovetails right into our final question of the evening. We've heard initiatives in Dearborn to defund the Dearborn Police Department. What is your plan for the police department in the yeah. city of Dearborn? Yeah, We say no to defunding. Um, our plan is actually focused on five parts. The first is mental health. We want to implement a crisis response team. And right now, the state of Michigan is actually working on establishing crisis response grants for local municipalities um, to prove, because we know that, um, for example, there are many frequent flyers, is what we call them in the healthcare field. People who call the police department or the fire department multiple times a week, um, hundreds of times a year, which pulls our police, our, 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 our human power away from more serious matters. We'd like to address them with resources that are much more appropriate. And second is also providing mental health supports for our first responders. The data is clear. We lose more first responders to suicide than we do in the line of duty. So we have to make sure that they have the physical and mental health supports that they need for themselves, but also for their families who are up all night wondering if they're coming home safely. Second is retooling our operations as we spoke to earlier. Focusing more on serious matters such as speeding, reckless driving, or some of the serious car theft that's happening here in the city of Dearborn that had an increase of over 70%. We know that gun-related uh, uh, gun crimes are on the rise as well. And so we have to make sure that we allocate resources on those much more serious issues. And we have to push back on providing welfare to these multi-billion dollar companies such as Walmart, which tends to pull one or two patrol vehicles out of our neighborhoods because of a crime of poverty. Somebody steals on average a t-shirt for worth $27, and it pulls one or two vehicles out of our neighborhoods, leaving those neighborhoods vulnerable in some of the peak hours of crime. Third is improving our community policing model. We're back in the day, you knew the officer that worked in your neighborhood, but that's no longer the case. We want the same officers to work the same beats, so you build that communication aspect, but also provide the opportunity where you're also getting to know the officer working in your neighborhood, not only when they're in your uniform, but also when they're out of it, through our neighborhood block parties. And so those are things that we'd love to incorporate. And I see the stop sign, so. Well, you're going to be offered next uh, three minutes to uh, provide your closing. I think you got to almost all of your points yes. there, but uh, perhaps you'll uh, share with us those final two points. So uh, please uh, give us your three minutes of closing and, and tell our viewers why um, we should vote for, for you for mayor. Thank you. So I'll conclude with the final two, ports, uh, two points of our public safety plan. The fourth is a public safety task force. This is a measure where we'd love to pull together um, people who have experience as line level officers, mental health professionals, people from the public, def uh, public defenders in the courts, um, come together to the table to keep uh, our public safety model innovative and bold, to look to best practices across the country, to make sure that our accountability and transparency metrics uh, are, are up to par, and that people have the confidence in our public safety professionals. Um, and the last component is evaluating our recruitment and training trying to find ways to incentivize local recruitment through our cadet program into the academy and into our department. Because I strongly believe if our public safety professionals live in the city, they're far more invested when they're working on the force. Um, so that's just to conclude the public safety model. Um, you know, we are less than two weeks off from the election. And to date, we are still the only candidate that has presented a plan and a vision for what we'd love to do if we are successful uh, in, in, in earning your vote uh, in November. A plan to address economic challenges. A plan to address Dearborn's public health. A plan to address the speeding and reckless driving. A plan to help lower property taxes without impacting services. And throughout the entirety of this campaign, I have not resorted to using any individual's hard-earned dollars to attack my opponents, nor talk disingenuously about them. We focus our campaign on the issues impacting you, the residents, and on presenting bold and innovative solutions. Why? Because I'm running for something. I'm running for our hometown. I'm running to improve the quality of life for all our residents and to chart a new path for Dearborn. I'm running for Salah Ali and his family, mm -hmm. who must grapple with sending their children out to play near Salina because of the poor air quality. I'm running for Miss Nancy Bach and the thousands of families whose basements have flooded, who feel helpless with each heavy rain. I'm running for Claudia Nickel, my neighbor, to ensure she always has a helping hand so she can stay independent and active. And I'm running for the Gorkevich family and the Berry family and all the families who are being terrorized by a very mm -hmm. bad rat problem with no solution in sight. And I'm running for the Rita family, who want to enjoy a quiet summer night on their front porch without the fear of a reckless driver coming down at 80 miles an hour. I'm running for change, and I'm running for something new. 
I have demonstrated my ability to build a team in Lansing that assisted thousands of residents with their, with their concerns. And I've demonstrated the ability to respond in moments of crisis from the pandemic to the flooding. And with your vote on November 2nd, I will continue as I always have to roll up my sleeves and get to work in solving the problems for all of Dearborn's working families. And so I'm asking for your vote on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Abdullah Hamoud and to Mr. Gary Warrencheck for joining us this evening. You can watch this in whole or in part uh, on our media network uh, on Facebook and our other social media outlets. Uh, it's 10 days away from the vote. Uh, whoever you're voting for, get out and, and mm -hmm. rock the vote, as we used to say in the 80s, MTV. I like to do a little throwback there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so get out and please vote. We've got a lot of folks out there running for uh, the Charter Commission, running for City Council, and our ever-important spot of mayor. So please vote uh, next month. And thank you again for joining us this evening. Thank you to our candidates.